welcome back to another Reality Check video review 3D printer unboxing. This is gonna be unlike any other. You know why? I know, I'm pretty excited actually. Uh, this time it's going to be of the Castle Anycubic 3D printer. This one is a little bit different from these guys in the sense that it's not your typical 3D printer. It uh, actually uses a pulley system to maneuver the head all the way around and the hot plate never moves at all. But I'm excited to try it out. Uh, this one does not have a heated bed, so I have gone ahead and prepared ahead of time. I've got a heated bed right here that we're going to be able to attach to this guy. Not only that, but we did get a few other if you've seen any of my 3D printing videos before, then you'll notice I like to have kind of a method and a setup with each and every single one. On this guy, we've got LED lights and a Raspberry Pi. On the CR10, we've got LED lights and a Raspberry Pi. And, ooh, that one's done over there. Nice, uh, but basically the thing is, I wanna make sure that this one also has LED lights and a Raspberry Pi. Uh, the Taz 6 does not currently have that, but I'm going to be getting the Taz 6 with that as well very soon. For this one, we do have the Raspberry Pi right here. And of course, we have the 12 volt to five volt adapter. That way we can hook it up to the power supply. With that, we also do have the RG Cam, which I got, actually this one has a, 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 a lens that you can kind of actually switch the focal length on it. So hopefully that one will be better for 3D printing. People actually said specifically that it was. I've got a ribbon cable that is about two feet rather than the shorter one. Of course, we have our LED light spool and the attachments that go with that for the power supply. And although I did get a hot plate, I made sure to get some borsalic glass with it so that it doesn't warp a really nice, strong, sturdy glass that's the same size, as well as a, as a PEI sheet. The PEI sheet is basically what sticks on there. It allows your prints to you know, stick very, very nicely, as well as uh, they pop off very nicely as well with a nice, clean glass finish. I recommend every single printer that I have, the Lulzbot, the CR10, and the A&A, a8 all have a PEI sheet on, on bottom and all of my prints turn out awesome. So I want to make sure that this printer as well as all the rest of my printers can print the same things and the same quality. All right, so the last things I've got right here is I printed a few different things. Believe it or not, there wasn't a whole lot of things on Thingiverse. So what I did was I actually got uh, this one file for the brackets that you can put on the top of the printer and this makes it more sturdy. So four of those right there, cool. Lastly, I've got the circular fan right here. So, uh, you know, the circular fan obviously goes right there and the nozzle can print underneath it and the fan hits all the prints really nice and smooth so you don't have those weird kind of edges and it gets all soft. Anyway, let's get this thing opened. So earlier my wife and I were watching Wonder Woman so I, I printed the Wonder Woman head thingy and it, and it totally like works. I haven't taken the supports out yet. It comes with glass. <laughs> I cannot believe this printer is under two hundred dollars. I mean, seriously, it 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 it's it's okay. Let's let's let's. This is going to be another fun project. Yeah. Of the packaged uh, bolts and pieces that we're going to need, and luckily they're all labeled in there: C08, M2, X5. It does come with its own glass as well as a cover piece that goes on top, and that is where you would normally print. I'm going to be using uh, actually a piece of glass with PEI on it, but this of course will be a nice backup to use if I ever needed it. And this right here looks like it's going to be used for the holder of the, the spool holder for the filament. Our little bearings for the pulley system. All right, cool, they actually give us a whole reel of filament right there. This one is a, an actual, a natural black, a natural black. I think I might be opening this one upside down, but regardless, this right here is the motherboard for the whole operation. This looks like a piece for the hot end and where the fan is going to be attaching to it right there. Ah, an adapter, so nice. And lastly, we're gonna take out our vertical brackets. Inside here, you have all the things that you need to actually hook up your uh, printer. You've actually got some test PLA print right here, cable coverings, the hot end material, or the hot end pieces right there. You've got the actual belts right in here, as well as all the other little wires that you're gonna need. Here we have the actual display and the covering of the display. This right here is the actual hot end piece. You can see it on the bottom, the tip right there. And this package right here has all of the pulley coverings that you can see that you'll need. Every little piece that you're gonna need, we're gonna keep those guys together. So here you've got a little toggle switch and you can actually use the power supply to turn the printer on and off, just like using that. All right, we've got the Castle product manual and instructions, so we're gonna make sure to keep that handy. All 
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and end the video for right now. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the unboxing. I am gonna go ahead and put this guy together and show you how it works with all these things attached in the next video. So uh, I'll see you then. Bye. He's like, why isn't it a printer already? And I, it's, I, it's gonna take some time, buddy. It's gonna take some time. This uh, this Castle Mini Cubic printer together. I am uh, also printing over there. I realized that I was having some issues with the steppers. So every single time I would uh, let this guy home, these guys would go up there and they would start shaking and they would go. So if you're having that problem where they're going up and they're not stopping, what that means is that they're just not synced properly. And so down here on the board, you've got these little three spots over here where you're going to be putting the X, Y, and Z motors for the end stops, right? The end stops that tell it when it stops. And then over here, you've got the X, Y, and Z where you actually plug in the stepper motors, right? So what you need to make sure is you need to make sure that the same motor, right? If this one is plugged in over here to where it's plugged in is Z, you need to make sure that this one right here, this stepper motor up here, or I'm sorry, this, that, that little uh, end stop, that needs to be plugged into Z over here. If you have X, Y, or Z over here not synced with X, Y, or Z over here, that's when they start doing the thing where they vibrate. It's pretty simple to do. So one other thing you can do also is when you're in your software over here, G28 is your homing. So M119 is going to be what's going to tell you if things are open or if they're triggered. And that's how you can tell which end stop is uh, plugged into which spot. And uh, you can go right from there. So. See if it tries to break the glass. If I did this right, it should stop right before the glass. It should stop right before the glass. Let's see. Oh, it did. It stopped right before the glass. Woo!
stop the music. All right, so uh, this is the end. This is the end of the video. We did a lot more stuff than I thought I was going to do. Um, and uh, we're going to probably do another video later once I'm completely finished. But right now we've got the 3D spindle on top. We actually are using an old hard drive piece to spin that around nice and freely on. And yes, it does spin very, very nice and freely um, by adding that attachment to that. So that is uh, available, going to be in the Thingiverse files as well for the plastic pieces underneath that. So we've got all the upgrades that I'm going to use for now uh, over here. I'm actually going to move where this camera's at because it's not in the right spot. But uh, we do have the camera like I talked about previously. And you can, of course, focus the link depending on where you're going to put it. I can move this guy around based on where I want it. I've got plenty of free cable there for it. Uh, I do intend on actually uh, extending this motor cable and then putting this motor up a little bit higher. Because, of course, I do have the extension, uh, the, the Bowden cables coming out the bottom of it to go into the top of the... Uh, the, heat, the hot end. So anyway, for the quick uh, final things that we did, we had to add the heat bed, but in order to do that, we had to add another power supply. So I added this 20 amp power supply to it, which did just fine for powering the, uh, the heat bed. It did not power the Raspberry Pi properly. Over time, I noticed it was freezing. So I did get a 30 amp power supply, which I am about to use this bracket to attach it to the, the edge of the wall there, and then we're gonna use this guy instead of that 20 amp over there. This does replace the existing power supply that you originally put into the side over here. So as you can see, right now, I don't, I don't have any power that's plugged in over here, just the Raspberry Pi and the dimmer switch, and if I go over to this side right now and give it some power, boom, you'll instantly see the lights come on because we've got the LEDs going all the way up on the top and bottom on two of the sides, and of course I can go back here and control how bright or how, you know, turn them completely off with the LEDs. So that right there is the f finale. That's it. Uh, I've got some more things I'm going to work on. And of course, I wish I could show you guys the bottom here. I'm going to go ahead and pull. Oh yeah, right there. That's, that's kind of a cool attachment. But if I pull all this plastic off, just so I can show it to you, you'll see down here we've got some fancy feet. So we've actually got these little rubber feet added on to the bottom of each of the legs. That way he, uh, you know, he just kind of bounces on if we have any kind of rough patches. Just nice and easy. So those are the fancy feet on bottom. I really like getting it up off the ground and giving it some extra space. Anyway, this is the basic build right there. And uh, it's, it's not 100% complete. I still have a few extra little things I need to do to it. So expect one more upgrade. But that is the Anycubic Castle printer right now. And it is making some really cool things for me. So... Uh, just just get ready get ready uh, also this guy is uh, available on GearBest for under two hundred dollars I think right now uh, you can get it for like hundred and seventy bucks so it is totally worth it yes I would definitely recommend this printer and the quality of it is fantastic I mean come on can you see that can you see that that's that's what it looks like up close it's just it's great it's good stuff so I've, I've not only have I created this but uh, I created a few other things and I also made this crushed cup which is crushed cup is super cool. So anyways, the end of the video is right here. I'll see you guys in the next one, later.